Welcome to Family Gamer TV. Now, as you know, we've been tracking with Castaway Paradise and there's been um, various comments online and some interesting discussion around it. But what we thought we'd do is sort of go to the source, go to the developer of the game and hear firsthand how the game's going, you know, and what the sort of communication's been like with Nintendo. So we're going to give Eric Deepervane a call, who's uh, studio head at Stolen Couch Games, um, and see if he's got a moment to talk to us. Hello, this is Stone Couch Games, Eric speaking. Hi Eric, have you got a moment to talk to us at Family Gamer TV about your Castaway Paradise game? Is this Andy? Yes. Ah, hi. Yeah, sure, I've got some minutes. Ah, super. Um, so, maybe if you could share your screen. Yeah, give me one sec. Let's go. Um... So, we're both seeing the same thing. So it's just loading and we're clicking start. So do you want to just, first of all, just introduce us to how Castaway Paradise sort of came to be? Yeah, sure, I can give you a short uh, history of our studio. So about four years ago, we uh, founded Stone and Couch Games. We were students at the Utrecht School of the Arts, and we just got a group together of the best uh, students, and we decided to make some games and create a company. So first we created uh, Kids vs. Goblins, which came out two years ago. Mm -hmm. um, we worked on that game for a year and it kind of flopped. That's too bad. You can still buy it. I should buy it. <laughs> Perhaps it will see a resurgence. <laughs> Sorry? Perhaps it will come back into popularity. Yeah, that would be great. <laughs> because the, the critical uh, aspect of the game, everybody actually liked it, but nobody bought it. So that's a bit sad. But we decided to make some smaller games afterwards, and that was the first game was Ichi, which has been downloaded over 700,000 times. That did a bit better, mm -hmm. but uh, we got a bit of profit from that game, but it wasn't enough. So we decided to create different types of games. So we looked at the market. Well, what can we create that hasn't been created on iOS and Android yet? So we looked at um, Animal Crossing and Harvest Moon and those types of games. And no one was actually creating those types of games for uh, other platforms than the Nintendo platforms. Mm -hmm. So we thought, like, why wouldn't we make such a game? Because there are millions of people who love these types of games, but you can't play those games on PC, on iPad, on Android. So mm -hmm. um, in 2012, we started development on Castaway Paradise. And now it's more than two years later, and uh, we're still developing it. And the game is sort of soft, it's soft launched in a few territories to sort of test it out, is that right? Yeah, last November we released it as a beta for iPad only in uh, Canada. And last month we released it as a beta in Australia, New Zealand and Vietnam. Mm -hmm. and, and so that's what we're seeing on the screen. So people who are familiar with Animal Crossing, I think will recognise some of the mechanics and some of the sort of the style of interactions going on here. Um, so, I mean, perhaps the most pressing question is, uh, do Nintendo mind? <laughs> I mean, not that it's only Animal Crossing, but, you know, how, what's the relationship been like with Nintendo on the game? Well, Nintendo is, is great. Um, we showed them the game about two years ago when we just started, and they really liked it. And they immediately asked, like, can you bring this to our new console, the Wii U? And we're definitely considering that because um, they haven't released an Animal Crossing game for Wii U yet. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I think a lot of people are waiting for these types of games also on Wii U. So why not? And um, I can't speak for Nintendo because um, <laughs> we're a different company and we have no affiliation with them. But uh, if you look at which type of games are available on the 3DS, on uh, the GameCube, on the Wii, on the Wii U, you will see a lot of, um, for example, Mario Kart clones. There are a lot of Mario Kart clones, and they're all licensed by Nintendo. So obviously, um, they love their IP and they will protect their IP, but uh, they're not threatened by other developers mimicking or um, being inspired by their IP. Mm -hmm. And how about um, sort of fans of Animal Crossing? Because it seems like that's some territory you maybe need to tread carefully in bringing a game that's quite similar. 
um, you know, attracting them to it without sort of, I guess, coming across that you're just ripping the game off, because um, obviously it's a sort of dearly loved franchise. How, how are you dealing with the fans? Uh, the fans are um, great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, obviously the fans, they love Animal Crossing and they think it's the best thing ever. And um, they're right. Animal Crossing is a great game, but we're not trying to create Animal Crossing 4. We're creating a game inspired by Animal Crossing and Harvest Moon and The Sims. It's like a combination of those three games. So it's creating something new, something different, but it will have similarities. And that's also the appeal of this game. So uh, we're not making a game for Animal Crossing lovers per se. Mm. We're making a game that is similar to those games. And it'll be available initially on iOS. Is it just iPad or will it be on iPhone, iPod Touch as well? It will be on iPhone and iPad and hopefully also iPad, iPod Touch. Um, it's also coming to Steam, to Android tablets, phones. So there will also be a Mac and PC release. Mm -hmm. So basically all platforms. I'd like to see it on the Vita. Is there any chance of that happening? Uh, we are, we're always talking with, um, with Sony. Mm -hmm. And um, last time we showed it, they, they were definitely interested. Yeah. And so maybe the game itself. So what we're seeing is our character here um, equipping, decorating their house, which is kind of similar sort of fair to Animal Crossing, but it seems like they can buy items a little bit easier. I mean, could you just talk through what we're seeing here? <clears throat> yeah, so this is the player house. You start out as a tent and then you can upgrade it to like a villa. And as you can see, you can place items on top of tables. You can place the tables, you can change the floor, the wallpaper. You can basically do everything you want in your house. And that's really cool because we have like more than 1400 items in the game you can decorate with and it's constantly growing we're constantly adding new stuff to the game for example right now there's the world cup the soccer world cup is going on in brazil so we added a brazil uh, world cup pack with mm -hmm. uh, football items and that's been doing really well for example the, the club colors had <laughs> which is really cool um, but you can you can decorate your your house, but you can also decorate every bit of the island. So this is a tile-based game, so you can every tile, every meter on the island, you can decorate. You can place fences, you can put statues up, you can do everything you like, and you can also share that with your friends. So it's really social and it's really customizable. Yeah, and you can see these outfits here. Mm -hmm. They're cool, yeah, right? Our character's got a dress on. Is, are the, is that? Are you limited to wearing dresses if you're a female character, or can you just choose what you want? You're not limited at all. At the start of the game, you you're asked like, "Are you a boy or a girl?" And basically, that doesn't matter because mm -hmm. you can just wear a dress, and you can change your face to a female face or a male face. It's up to you. And we're seeing here the sort of VIP perks of the game. So there's some ways that you can access more content. Can you maybe talk about this while it's on the screen? Yeah, sure. Um, Castle Paris is a free-to-play game. So most of the players will not spend a dime. It's completely free. But what we included is a VIP subscription. And that's like for a few dollars uh, a month, you will get a lot of exclusive content. So immediately you will get these items that you can see, like the crowns and golden equipment and drum kits and all kinds of exclusive items like a gold mirror who doesn't want a gold mirror <laughs> <laughs> yeah so these are items you you couldn't get unless you had that vip access yeah there's some items decorative items that are locked to vip members and also uh, if you are a vip you will get a 20 percent discount on all items and you will get like unlimited water so if you go farm it will take water it will use water, but if you are a VIP, it doesn't use any water, so that's good. Mm -hmm. And when you log in each week, you will get exclusive items. And so that is, I quite like that, because rather than, say, paying a pound for a golden duster, <laughs> which I'm intrigued about, um, 
you, you've got a predictable. So as a parent, I know that I would I'd subscribe to it as a VIP, and I, I can then predict how much I'll be paying through the year, rather than you know a, an unpredictable price that's dependent on how many transactions my child does. Yeah, and here you can actually see what you will get next week, and week after that, and uh, so you you can actually track uh, which items you've gotten, and also mm -hmm. the in. Uh, game currency you will get each week you will get some in-game currency so you don't have to pay for anything if you got the subscription it's actually a really good deal for people who are, who prefer the premium style games mm -hmm. and so we've seen flashing up a few little new quest icons next to different um, inhabitants of the island which mm -hmm. are they are inhabitants animals always or I'm not quite sure yeah they're all a goat. Cool. yeah so this is a goat it's Samir the goat and he's the shop owner and he always wants you to spam so mm -hmm. <laughs> right now he's giving you a big bag of, of spam letters you need to deliver to uh, the other other villagers and that's something that's also differentiating between games like animal crossing in animal crossing you had like one quest like repay your debt for your house and that's basically it and then you're completely free to do whatever you want and that's great but we like to make a game that's more accessible and it's more guiding. So in this game you have a lot of quests, like hundreds of quests, and they're all written with storylines. And so you can actually uh, do quests for the villagers and get to know them, and you get will get to know their backgrounds and get a real sense of uh, a relationship with them. And so for example, now I have to deliver the bag of spam to, um, to Amelia. And she's really happy with it, obviously. <laughs> she has <laughs> a new quest for me, so she wants me to remove all the weeds on the island, so I can do that. Mm -hmm. and just um, find the weeds on my map, for example, and you can do that. So all the kinds of little quests yeah. and will be rewarded with experience and money. And when you level up, you will unlock new decorative items and clothing and new abilities. For example, you will get a pickaxe or a shovel which you can use to um, to shape your island even more. Mm -hmm. And I noticed there, while you were off hunting for weeds, you walked through some flowers. Now, on Animal Crossing, I wouldn't do that, because <laughs> it would damage the flowers. Yeah. And also do things like stick into the path, because obviously cause you, get, you slowly wear away the grass. Does it have that kind of sort of aspect to it, in terms of how the world reacts to you? Um, well, the game is a real-time game. So um, things will change, there are seeds and etc. But um, we don't like it that you can uh, destroy the world without wanting to. Mm -hmm. Because we want you to share all the things you've created. Like this is a really boring island still, but you can actually make it really beautiful and you don't want people to visit your island and destroy everything. <laughs> yeah. You want to show off what you created. And so you can have um, other players come and visit in the same way as Animal Crossing? That will be a part of a future update. That's something we yeah. have in our uh, office running already, and it's really amazing. It's like completely seamless. So for example, if you go and play the game, I can see your head popping up, and I can just ask you to, can I join your, your island and see what you've been up to? Mm -hmm. it's completely nice. seamless. That's cool. How about other staples of Animal Crossing in terms of fishing um, and bug collecting is there that same sort of ecosystem of animals that are available oh look here we go you're doing a bit of fishing now <laughs> yeah we made it a bit of a mini game so you can use fish food to get specific uh, diff more difficult to catch uh, fish for example but you can also just fish uh, without fish food and you obviously will see a leaderboard of your friends and you can compete against them but you nice. can also donate the fish at a museum to get some uh, rewards. And and get, do you get different fish, bugs, animals at different times of the year? You're saying that it's, it's seasonal and you get a day-night cycle. Is that, is that the same? Um, not yet, but mm -hmm. what we do is um, you can grow specific types of flowers that will attract specific insects. Right. So if you level up, then you will be able to buy roses and roses will attract uh, a certain bug. And that's one way to, to get um, all the uh, insects and fishes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so as the more we look at this, the more I realise that its, it's, it's similarities don't, aren't limited to Animal Crossing. So what you're talking about there reminded me quite a lot of Viva Piñata, where you're developing your 
garden or your island to attract particular animals, so you're sort of saying in a similar way. And then earlier, in the house design, it looked more like The Sims because you had different rooms and you could zoom out. So could you maybe talk a bit about what other games have inspired Castaway Paradise? Mm, oh yeah, sure. Yeah, the core gameplay is like the island life simulator. That's obviously something that's uh, kind of unique to Animal Crossing. Not a lot of games are doing that. So the core is, is, is that. And uh, that's the only thing we actually took from that. And then it's like, okay, we're not going to look at Animal Crossing anymore. We're just going to create this game. And over the last two years, it just evolved into something um, unique. And that's basically this. this. And yes, it, it does look like The Sims, like a lot of customization, way more than the other types of games. You can actually do and uh, do a lot of things, like customize every bit of your island. And that's, that's uh, different. And for example, the farming. Um, the farming is like a mini game on itself. You can grow all kinds of um, crops, but there's also like a match three mini game. Like you have mm -hmm. to plant three uh, peppers right next to each other that will grow into one big pepper. And there's lots of depth in there as well. So you can really have to figure out uh, how long it will take for a certain crop to grow and how much profit you will get from that. And we want people to share that information and, and play together to find out uh, the best ways to earn money and get XP, etc. Mm -hmm. And so it sounds like while you were de developing this, um, Animal Crossing New Leaf on the 3DS would have been released. If my chronology is correct, <laughs> is that true? And did, did you, when it came out, did you sort of take a fresh look at it? Uh, yeah, during the development that came, that game uh, was released indeed, yeah. Um, I bought it. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was Animal Crossing. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, they did some new things, but nothing that we weren't doing or we wanted to imitate. It's it's a different experience. Mm -hmm. And so, if you've got somebody who's listening, who's um, a fan of Animal Crossing, or perhaps their family has followed Animal Crossing, and mm -hmm. um, what would you say, you know, would be a reason to come into this new sort of way of doing it in Castaway Paradise? What's the sort of USP? Do you think here? Um, <clears throat> well, the first thing is that you can play it on all your platforms. And the second thing is that it's completely free. <laughs> that's Which a, is a good thing. <laughs> yeah, that, that is really good. And uh, the third thing is that this, this, is, this is a game as a service. And what we mean by that is that we will continue to support this game for years to come. So it's not like you're buying a package and that's it. But we're constantly listening to your feedback and improving the game. So since we soft launched in November, we've uh, made more than 15 updates to this game, constantly listening to the players and creating new features. For example, this map view that wasn't available uh, uh, a month ago. Mm -hmm. We integrated that because people wanted this and they voted on this feature. It's like a... Uh, no, oh, sorry. <laughs> so if, if, if we get a lot of votes for a specific feature, yeah, we will integrate it in the game. Yeah, so on the, it, there's a forum, is there, or do you just use Facebook? How do you, how do you um, interact with your players? So on the left side of your screen, uh, in the corner, mm -hmm. see a feedback button. You can, oh yeah, with the envelope on it. Yeah. yeah, you can just press it and leave your feedback and people, will, people can vote on that. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of our viewers are quite keen on Skylanders and Disney Infinity because of that physical crossover. And your characters here look kind of, they look beautiful basically. Have you thought about doing something like the Amiibo figures where you have a physical presence for the game as well? Yeah, we thought about it, but actually we want to turn it upside down. Like, um, you can customize your own character and wouldn't it be awesome if you can just press a button and we will 3D print your character and made it to you. Like you can actually order your own character. That's oh, that would be that cool. We, that would be really cool. <laughs> so that's something we're thinking of. So you design your character in the game, you customize it completely, and when you're happy with it, then you, you can just you order click it. print. Yeah, and then we'll print it for you. Yeah, I like that idea of that. And I like the idea because these characters evolve over time. So if if you, you know you had a 3D print of your character 
each birthday you know I could imagine doing that for my kids and then they'd have a collection of their little character as they went on through the years yeah that would be really awesome right <laughs> yeah so is there a promotional materials or perhaps a trailer for the game that you know we could share with people who are excited about it yeah I got something new for you oh yeah something coming out in the autumn mm -hmm. and it's the animal day event so this is uh, completely new so um, here you can see the new items that we are introducing for that week only. So these items you can only get during that event. And then they're gone. Then they're gone. For wow. Them. So you have to uh, buy them for free, um, collect them and share them with your friends because uh, uh, they will be very, very valuable after that week. Yeah. So you can dress like an <laughs> Cool. Like an animal. So you can dress like an animal week. Yeah, that's nice. That. And so, if you were selling them to your friends, can you set the the price? Um, well, it's more of like gifting. Yeah. But you can exchange items, so that's cool. Mm -hmm. Cool. So that's one. That's a trailer. Do you have anything else lined up? You can sneak us a preview of. Uh, well, I can show you the main trailer, which shows the all the customization options in the game. So here you start out as uh, as it's winter, and the whole island is very barren, it's like completely boring mm -hmm. but now you can see, see what you can do with the island so you can decorate it like it's Christmas plant all kinds of trees meet the villagers and then afterwards it's become it becomes summer nice plants come out and all the things that you can see placed you can do that so there's all placed all created by the player so it's really customizable. Nice. And so, people who are keen to get hold of the game, is there, I know you haven't got a firm date, but have you got a rough idea when it will come to other territories? When it's good enough. <laughs> We're constantly yep. developing the game, and when we think it's ready, um, we'll let you know, definitely. But it's not long. We're, we're getting really close to releasing it. So maybe this year, from the sounds of it. Oh, definitely. Super. Well, we'll check back um, when that sort of hits a wide release. I really appreciate your time. It's great to hear the sort of inside track on Castaway Paradise. Look at that. It's absolutely massive. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, we're excited about the game. Oh, that's great to hear. Super. Thanks for your time. Bye-bye. No problem. Bye.